Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai and welcome to the live stream of a all with the local body candidates for the 2022 local body elections. My name is Ivor Jones and my family and I have been residents of Apotiki since we moved here from Rotorua in 2011. As a resident that will be voting in this year's election on the 8th of October 2022, I was interested in asking the mayoral and council candidates to have a all with me about who they are, why they have applied for the positions they have. I work in the digital media field and the intention of this cast is to raise the awareness of the Portiki community in terms of the characteristics and qualities of those people seeking to serve the community. I have spoken directly to several candidates about this idea and a number are positive, including today's guest Steve Collins. I would like to welcome Steve Collins, who is standing for Mayor of Portiki. Steve states that Portiki needs to grow its population by encouraging development. We need a great leadership and vision ensuring efficient infrastructure, enabling greater opportunities for our community. Tēnā koe, Steve. A YouTube channel exists that will hold the videos of our conversations so they can be referenced in the future. Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai and welcome to the live stream of a quarter with the local body candidates for the 2022 or Portuguese local body elections. All candidates receive the same 10 questions upon which our quarter is based, which should be around 15 to 30 minutes in length, and I hope that you find it of value. Who am I and why am I running? Um, who am I? I'm uh, moved to a Portuguese when I was 12, 13 years old with my family. Um, Ray and Woody Collins came over here to retire. And basically grew up here from that time until I was about 28. And then I left at the place then. I had, what, seven siblings that I grew up with. I've got five grandchildren and five children of my own. i uh, been involved in all sorts of businesses and things in the last um, 28 years since I've been away. Yeah. So um, the reason why, and the reason why I'm... Uh, decided to run for mayor is um, basically uh, I was semi-retired um, and when I came home I was um, to be frank saddened to see the, 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 the what had happened to the town in the last 28 years since I'd left and um, decided that I'd um, have a go at run, running um, I was um, asked to by a lot of people in town to have to, to, to put my hand up including a couple of councillors. So, um, yeah, so I thought the best thing to do is, is, is um, have a go and see what uh, what happens. Biggest challenges. Uh, the biggest challenges would be housing and development and jobs. They all sort of interconnected. And um, to, to achieve, uh, you know, rapid growth, I think the big the, the biggest challenge, if I was the mayor, would be to um, get getting the councillors and the council staff all on the same page, and then um, once we and then ident identifying what we need to get done, and um, then pr prioritising those um, those jobs that need to be done, you know, and get it and actually getting them ticked off. The biggest challenges facing our community, I'd say, um, development, jobs. Housing and our health problems. There's, there's four of them really, and they're all inter interconnected. And um, to 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 um, actually solve those problems, the, the the hardest problem for me, if I became mayor, would be to actually um, getting all our councillors and staff on the same page, and then prioritising how we're going to address the, the the concerns of the community, basically. And I think that that's the the be the hardest thing is getting everybody on the same page. To be honest, by the, by the end of my term, I'd like to have a, a cohesive team that's actually ticked off a few of the boxes that we've just, you know, that we've uh, jobs that we've prioritised that the com that the community have told us need doing, and um, you know, and we can do that a lot of those quite quickly too. I'd say um, it's just um, identifying what's actually the most important things and getting on with it. Yes, and um, all the things I've 
looked at and been alluded to, 95% of them are, you know, achievable to be fixed. That's just, um, in my opinion, the hardest problem we're going to have is dealing with our drug addiction and mental health. Um, we've got a major problem with methamphetamine in our town and that's going to be the big issue, the biggest issue for us, our health and well-being of our community. I think the local role of the local government is, is critical. It's just critical. Um, you know, at the end of the day, um, the resources in our region uh, should be, in my opinion, um, managed and run by the local people. We know better. We know best. We live here. We know what's best for us. And in our in, and we're lucky in our Rohi when it comes to most of our um, resources, like our water resource. Um, our ancestors have um, sort of um, had it sorted out. We've got a sewerage problem coming up um, in the near future, but that we can sort those things out. But critical that, in my opinion, that local local resources stay locally managed and definitely in local ownership. No corporatisation. No corporatisation. I'm not into corporatising anything. <laughs> We've seen the results of that. My most important asset I'd say that I have to bring to the table is experience in business and in politics. Um, I'm business-minded. Um, I've been in... Um, you know, like the same governance positions before where you've, um, you know, you've got to actually work as a team, whether you like it or not. And even though you might agree to disagree, I've uh, done all those sorts of things. And, uh, I, and I believe I'm a, I'm a natural leader and I lead by example. Um, that's, that's how I've always been, you know, first to work, last to leave. First to get in, if there's something to be done, you're in there doing it. You know, you lead by example, just like Richie McCaw did or... Buck Shelford or any of the best people in the world, they lead by example, you know, Russell Coots, they, they lead from the front, mate. They show you how to do it and they get on with it and they don't expect anybody else to do anything less. Uh, first of all, you've got to be respectful of each other. Um, you know, you've got to actually be respectful because everyone's got different opinions on things. Um, everyone's um, representing different issues and coming from different angles. So you, first of all, you've got to be respectful to each other. Um, you can debate robustly. Uh, uh, I think one of the most important things is to listen. So listening, listening to what people are actually saying. And, and at the end of the day, um, you will not agree on everything. You know, you, you, you've got to learn to walk from the, away from the table sometimes and just agree to disagree. You know, we, we're, just, we're just too far apart to agree. But in saying that, that doesn't mean that you give up. You, st you know, in, of, in the past with my experience, I've, I've found that, you know, a lot of times when you get to real tough subjects, uh, letting a little bit of time and letting people um, soak it up and go and get different opinions and learn a little more changes people's opinions and minds. So, um, yeah, as long as you're respectful, as long as you agree to disagree if you have to. Um, and I think that's the most important thing, which is the lot that everybody that's at the table, even if you're not, you know, you're voting against things, then at least, at least you've been respected, you've had your say, you've had the opportunity. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's a democracy. So if we, the majority are moving that way, that's the way we're moving. I, th I, I personally, I think central government need to listen to local government. I think there's, we've gone, we've got a stage now in our political system where the central government are telling local government what to do and pretending to consult them. And, but we already know the outcome, um, you know. So it's not democracy and it's, not, it's around the wrong way. Um, so I think that's critical that central government should listen to the local government because at the end of the day, the local government have got their finger on the pulse. They are at the coalface of our communities, not central government. You know, it's the local people that are at the coalface and we live here and we have to, you know, this is our rohi. This is where we live and eat, sleep, die, a whole lot. So um, we know what's best for us. 
but we need support from our central government, obviously, and a lot of things, especially in our rohi. And um, so, so I think what central government needs to be doing is just just listening better. That's all. Yeah. Oh, how would I lead my community? This once again from the front. Um, if, you know, we've we've come close a few times. Um, we've been really lucky that we haven't had a real major one for since about nineteen in the sixties, uh, where it's actually turned into the real deal. I.e., the you know the, the the stock banks have come come over and the, the town's gone underwater. We've come close many times, and I, and how I'd lead my community is is um, the first thing we've got to do is, is actually have something more than a evacuation plan to just run up to Hospital Hill because in a real I've seen real emergencies and I've been parts of them and the real situation is is after the tsunamis wiped out the town or the flood how are we going to house feed look after toilet um, you know all our people uh, those who may be injured, all that sort of thing. So I think I think part of my strategy in doing that is is just to we, we need a community centre, event centre type thing up on Hospital Hill. We need to develop a um, a, a plaza or some sort where we can have um, you know a shopping centre up there as well. So that if this ever occurs, we're actually prepared. We're prepared at the moment. We're prepared to get it off the lowland and onto the highland. We're pretty, we got that pretty well sussed, what, what, what I understand. You know, I, I think last time, I think the, the last council, I think, that if I recall, it only took about 45 minutes to an hour and everybody was, you know, up on the highland, which is fantastic. That's, that's really, really good. But imagine if you're not, if, you know, the, now the tsunami's come through or the flood has happened, now what? Now, where are we sleeping? Where, where, how are we feeding all these people? How are we housing them? Where are they going to go to toiletry? So that's sort of where I think. And then, uh, and, uh, and, and until then, the first thing I'd do, because I'm a helicopter guy and that, I'd have an eyes in the sky straight away. I'd be ringing the local helicopter operator like Stephen Woods or somebody and saying, right, get that machine in the air. You're my eyes in the sky. Let me know what's happening with those riverbanks. Where's it going to come through? You know, how far away is that tsunami? So we're getting real-time information coming back to our civil defence centre, not second-hand information. Um, that's how I'd, uh, I've always rolled in the past in those situations. You're better to mobilise the locals quickly, local people, who know the area, know what's going on, seen it all before, know where to look, and um, know how to roll. And, and um, you need to practice that stuff. For me, it's going to be, I, I'm, I'm going to be, I think I will, if I manage to, people vote me in and I become the mayor, I want to have a open door policy with me. I want people to know that they can come and talk to me or ring me up anytime. Um, I want people to understand that I'm here for them. I want to hear their concerns, even if they may be trivial. They, I still want to hear them because, you know, to some trivial things to some people are big things. You know, they might seem trivial to you and me, but they're big things. So I think you've got to really listen to people. You've got to be transparent. Very important. And I think uh, be accountable and, 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 you know, if you and be open with the people. I think most people in my life, if, you know, if you, if you want something and you say, for example, you wanted more, better footpaths in your street and you were hassling me about it and I was the mayor. And I thought, well, okay, let's let's look at that. And I went and talked to the CEO and talked to our roading people and our footpath people. And they said, mate, we haven't got any money for it until, you know, two years from now, blah, 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 whatever's going on. Well, I think if you then went back to that person and says, hey, um, you know, I've, uh, we haven't got any money for this at the moment, but we've got it planned in a couple of years' time. We're going to be it's in our plan. We've got it sorted, but it's coming up. Now you, 99% of people in, my, in the world I've ever walked in, they're happy with that because there's a plan, we've got a time frame, and you've answered my question in a positive way. Now I know that I've only got to put, this, put up with this for a couple of years more and it's going to be done. But if you don't be transparent and you don't 
tell people and you don't keep people informed of what's really happening in the you know out there they then start coming up with all sorts of their own ideas of what's happening and what's going on and you know this guy's doing this or this one's doing that or there's no money or this gone broke or whatever you know, and so you get all that sort of thing so i think the biggest most important thing is just listen to your community be transparent and um be approachable, you know. I want to. I want to be the guy that, no matter where I'm getting around, whether I'm talking to the, you know, the mongrel mob down the town there in the main street, or talking to the, you know, the, the prime minister. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm listening. I'm. I'm listening to your concerns, and um, I'm here for our community, and that's my job, is to listen to my community and carry out their wishes. You know, the 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 the, the, the overlying theme of what you hear coming from the community. Of course, you can't do everything. But if you hear 10 people saying the same thing, well, hey, you've got a trend going here. So you need to actually really listen up and start paying attention as a, as a mayor and then start pro talking to your councillors and then start talking to your, you know, your CEO and your council people about how we can, you know, we've got this issue coming or what's happening and this is real and we need to listen to our community and get on top of it. No political conflicts, I don't think, that I can think of at all. Um, um, no. No, I'm basically semi-retired now and um, my children are taking care of whatever we're doing, most of it now. I'm just, um, yeah. So hence, I'm um, quite enjoying what's happening because I've got my teeth into this thing since I put my head up. So I'm, I'm actually really enjoying the campaign and enjoying what I'm doing because um, I feel like I've got a purpose again and... Um, yeah, it's great. I'm, 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 I am. I'm enjoying uh, getting out there and hopefully, um, you know, democracy and the people's uh, voices is heard and I become the mayor. I, I'm looking forward to it. If I don't, well, that's wonderful too because at the end of the day, it's the people that decide. And I've got a few other things I've got planned that I can get into and keep me busy. But um, I'd really like to be the, the mayor of this town and um, turn this place around and and um, take it into the future. Yeah, for sure. This, um, thank you. Um, I, I thought the format was great. Um, great job, great questions. Um, you know, end of the day, we've got to leave it up to the people to decide. And um, uh, if I do um, manage to pull it off and the people decide that I'm their guy, well, I promise you right now, I'll do everything in my power to push through the policies and the um, ethics and the ideas that all come from me and my people that we are in our town. So um, I'll do the best job I can. I promise that. Tēnā kwe, Steve. Tēnā kwe.